It is my pleasure to introduce Caroline Terrazas, Organizational Performance Manager at Union Sanitary District. Hello, Caroline. Hi, Corey. How are you? I'm I'm happy to be here. <laughs> we here. We got it started. And uh, just real quick, what's my hard stop today? There is no hard stop. So right up, yeah. I can keep everybody right level. until three. Okay, good. It's a lot yeah. of pressure. If Lots of fun to stuff stay to on after three. They can. <laughs> uh, Corey, what I think we're going to do is we'll, I'll just do a quick introduction slide. And then um, if you want to, when I tell you, if you want to uh, pop up the poll questions and then after the poll questions, if you don't mind um, for the participants, I have a PDF of the slides that you can take away with you. And I have four handouts just because I'm the handout queen, but I'll go through what they're all for. You don't have to download all of them and print all of them. You don't need them to participate. It's just more takeaways. So um, let me just real quick, like Corey mentioned in our time today, we're gonna talk about time management, which I think is a silly word because you really can't manage time. And we'll talk more about that. Um, but like she mentioned, my name is Caroline Terraz and I work over at Union Sanitary District in Union City and I've been there uh, since 2016. And I'm the organizational performance manager. So really what that means is I do a lot with emergency. I have my emergency hat. I do safety training. Um, I work a lot with continuous improvement as well as our KPIs or our, um, you know, our indicators, performance indicators. And um, really love my job and, and all the elements of it. But one of the things I'm most passionate about is training. And uh, we have a leadership school that we go through topics and time management happens to be one of them as well. Um, before that, I was in for-profit education, and I have my master's in ed in training. So right now, you're going to see me in my most excited element, being here with you today. And I'm really excited about this topic. I've been training it for years. Um, and when I get into the classroom paycheck, we'll, I'll go into more detail about what we're talking about. But before we do that, um, I like to inject a little bit of fun. I'm like the meme queen. I like funny things. And I don't know who doesn't like Michael Scott. I can't take ownership for this, but you miss out on 100% of the poll questions that you don't respond to. So we have three poll questions that Corey's gonna pop up for us today. It's, I think it's my first rodeo dealing with Zoom uh, poll questions, but I just wanna gauge a little bit about our audience. It's, it's different talking to a screen than in a classroom full of people and interaction. So I wanna get to know a little bit more about you or just your situation. So um, Corey, if you wanna go ahead and pop up the first poll question. Not sure how yes, it's going I to shall. Be. <laughs> Here we All go. right. So because we're talking about time management, a lot of different things, everybody's in a different position right now. There's a lot of change. So if you can take a moment, um, what location do you work? Are you working from home full time? Are you the WFH now, the work from home? Um, or are you still going into the office? Are you um, operations, hands-on? You need you've still been going in, maybe your shift has changed it changed. Um, or are you hybrid? Are you doing a little bit of both like me where I'm here um, in my home office, but then still go in right from time to time? And then some of us, this may not apply. Some of us might be students or interning and just have just a various schedule. So go ahead and take a moment. Just want to get yeah, an idea. We have, of um, yeah, um, so please respond if you haven't had a chance to do so. It's really um, a great uh, resource for everybody. So we uh, will be ending the poll soon. Couple more seconds. And five, this is your last chance, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so I'll end the polling. And uh, I'm gonna share the results right now. Oh, we have a hybrid. Okay, so good mix. So definitely some home officer, home office folks. Home office. You know, it really does feel like being a home officer. If you're like someone like me with kids at home, we now have, need to like get commands and different titles for everything that we're doing with everything going on. So we have 56% hybrid. Okay, and then we have about 30% on the call that are just working from home. It's different. I mean, working from home isn't new. It's been around for a long time, but I know in our industry, for our agencies, it's, it, it, it might be different for some of you. And uh, not many of you going into the office right now. And that makes sense, especially with uh, where we're at with COVID. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next poll question, moving right along. 
Um, now I just want to get an idea of, um, is it the positions, this one, Corey? Let's see. Oh, hold on a second. I'll grab it. Um, uh, um, I've got to pull up poll two. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm launching it now. Here we go. All right, so I, we probably won't have, I mean, we might have some folks that are in the fields quite a bit or operations that might be at home a little bit, but um, just curious about what your primary work function is. Uh, if you're, if most of you are in the home or hybrid, you probably have maybe less of an operational position, but I don't want to make any assumptions. So this one, we can probably close this pretty quick. And there's a method to our madness. One, we wanted you to play along a little bit. We know it's after lunch and we want to, you know, poke you by asking questions. Go ahead and close it, Corey. Um, couple more uh, okay. seconds. People are still coming I in. I see Michael Scott but, says yeah. that you own, you miss 100% if you don't play. <laughs> you can't. I was going to say you can't win if you don't play, but <laughs> there's no prize at the end of this. Um, but yeah, okay, well, we're getting there. Great. Okay, we're going to call close the poll in five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, we're closing the poll. And I'm going to share the results now with everyone. Okay. Yeah. I had a feeling when looking at the other stat. Okay. Good. Well, good news is I'm, I'm touching on a lot of different subjects, but uh, we should definitely have an, a plenty of strategies for our administrative and management folks. All right. Great. Thank you All for right. that. Wow. A good majority of you here. Okay. And then we're going to wrap it up with one more and then we're going to start talking about fun stuff. And I believe the last question is um, working in front of the computer. Right, so when you're working, I would assume again, we had a, a, a large population because we weren't sure that are on that are highly administrative. Um, so I would make some assumptions that we're gonna have some high computer work for this answer here. And for some of us, even when in the office, we seem to be in front of the computer, right? Quite a bit, just because of that's just what our job lends us to do. Um, it's different not being on our plants or in our agencies and being able to go and communicate with some of our peers. Isn't it? How are we doing, Corey? Pretty good. Okay. Well, I see a trend here. Although um, it's uh, it's getting closer. Anybody else? Okay. We'll be closing our poll soon. So. Yes, there we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to end the poll in five, four, make a prediction. Three, two, and one. Robert, what do you think? What's your what prediction, you think, Robert? What's our prediction? I what think do you predict, Robert? The folks uh, working administrative on the computer. A lot of time in yeah. front of these crazy monster computers sucking our life out, right? We got to make sure we find balance. That's my big thing. What do we find out for you, right? Okay. Oh, half. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's about right. All right. So thank you so much. We, we thought we'd throw in some polls just to get a little, to jazz it up a little bit. We're working through. Um, but now let's get into the fun, the nuts and bolts. Corey, if you don't mind, can you... Um, Put those uh, handouts in the chat box and the PDF PowerPoint. Okay, it's not, yeah, it's not a huge yep. rush by any means. I just want everybody to be able to take something back. All right, so I know, speaking of time management, you looked at this topic mm -hmm. and you're like, I hope I get something out of this. I mean, time management, you hear about it a lot. Um, you're investing your time with me today um, and I appreciate that. And I hope that um, I'm able to provide you just something. The interesting thing about time management, there's not, there really isn't this magic tool or method that works for everybody, a one-stop shop, but there are some common behaviors. There are some things that, if anything, you're going to feel more like a refresher today. And sometimes in light of everything going on in the world of COVID um, and just the different kind of stress and anxiety, to be honest, it's probably not time management that we need to focus on. It's probably more 
stress management, change management. It's probably a lot more of the emotional component that we need to focus on, but I think it's still important to give some strategies here. So in our time together, um, in our next 45 minutes or so, I'm just gonna give you, believe it or not, there are some tried and true, some very foundational time management behaviors that probably are not gonna be new to you. Um, but I wanna spend a little time uh, focusing on some tips for if you're working at home, we have a few operational and shift workers. And if you're not that person, maybe you have a coworker that is, that this might be good feedback for them. Or maybe you have a family member that this might be helpful. Um, and then also if you're managing a team um, and you're, I mean, you may be worried about your own time management, but you wanna make sure that your team members have good time management. Well, I have a couple of strategies for you as well. So I try to please all the audience members that might be on today. So hopefully it's will be helpful. And the last thing, I mean, you can't talk about time management if you don't talk about the barriers, the stuff that blocks us, that keeps us from being really, really good time managers. So procrastination being one of them. And if you know me, I actually have a class of just on procrastination. And then we'll talk a little bit about multitasking because it's a, it's a little bit of a, um, I guess a debate over my lifetime in, in, in teaching that topic. I put my magic eight ball there. Why? Because like I said, there is no magic one formula. If you're here to hear Caroline's going to give you the COVID answer, I won't be able to do that. But I will give you lots of great ideas, a lot of good information. Um, going back and refreshing my materials, it was a good reminder of me that in certain jobs and responsibilities, I was able to accomplish things in certain ways, but as they change, you need to adjust. And of course, with COVID, this new environment, we're, we're under some different kinds of pressure. Um, so hopefully, even in our time together, you get something out of it, even if it's just one thing. And I hope to teach you something you haven't heard before. That's, that's really my goal. So we'll find out. One of my absolute favorites, the definition of time management, right? So it's the process. So you can't manage time. That's a, you know, you always think about what can you control, right? What can you do? Um, one thing that's a given is the same hours of the day, same hours of your work day, same hours of your work week. You're not going to get any more, any less. You decide how you want to operate that. Now, this is different from overtime and things like that. But at the end of the day, you can't manage time, but time management is a process. So if you get your mind thinking of it's the behaviors, it's being able to plan, and it's being able to take conscious control. Conscious control, like we know, it's that kind of that mental factor, right? It's kind of like, I hate to say it, I hate this analogy, but like a workout plan. It's like that conscious, like focus and attention. This is how you're gonna do it and creating repetitive behaviors to get to that point. And sometimes you gotta try different things, not the same method works for everybody. Um, Cause so it's the conscious exercise of control over the amount of time you spend on activities especially to increase effectiveness, efficiency, and productivity. So whenever you're looking at um, a project or managing your time or a bunch of stuff that's going on and you have to make some big decisions, uh, it's, there are some tried and true practices to help you organize. Um, really, uh, managing time is about, it's not about squeezing as much in your day. That's actually poor time management because sometimes if you're overdoing it, something else is gonna suffer, right? Um, but really what you think about it as a process, you're learning how to simplify. You're learning how to streamline. Uh, believe it or not, it's the activity of relieving stress and anxiety is part of time management. Um, making time for people who play and rest, that's self-care, we're gonna talk about that. And then rearranging or kind of reimagining your schedule. And then the most important part is practicing the behavior. So you're gonna hear me say, I'm gonna talk a lot about especially right now, anxiety and empathy and self-care, because those are all components that are impacting our ability to be productive in the workplace right now. So if you're managing time, you gotta manage all those components. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's start with the general tips. This should hopefully um, be helpful for everybody. Uh, I will tell you when we have our first handout to take a look at. So one thing that's interesting about time management, right, is that if you go and you Google it, or if you go read some books, or you go identify what you want to learn, you're going to hear the top 10 time management, top six, five most effective time management. I've read a lot, a lot of books on this. Um, I've done a lot of research on it. And uh, one thing I appreciate about just kind of brushing up on my material for this is that you have your tried and true behaviors. 
your tried and true are your given, your core, the ones that have proven to be successful, the ones techniques that work. So I start this with the foundation. So again, for some of you, it may not be anything new, but those include really three primary things. It's maintaining some sort of schedule. Now you, we can talk about tools and different like block scheduling and different kinds of scheduling, but it's maintaining and planning like on a calendar or some kind of document. The second tried and true time management tip would be uh, developing a list, like a project list, activity list, assignment list, task list. Really, you're gonna hear that word task list. And then the last piece and a very critical part because they go together is your ability to prioritize and organize, right? So if you can have those three kind of foundational concepts and, and how you do it, whether it's a written organizer or planner or online, that is gonna be different for everybody. But if you can get those core techniques down, that's the primary of any good time management strategy. And I would think most of you probably would recognize that or have had success with those. Things. Um, so I'm gonna start here. I love this picture, being in a cockpit, because look at all those different tools and gadgets and, and different ways to actually get, to get from point A to point B and all the different things you need to have in your way. And I wanna take a moment because uh, I know at my agency, we have a position called the planner scheduler. And I think this is probably one of the most um, amazing positions that I absolutely adore at our district because I, I can't imagine the amount of information that they have that they have to organize uh, on a daily basis. Not only they're man they're managing a schedule just within their team. And so for some of you, your agency might have a different title for it. But if you think about your collections group, or your operators or your mechanics, Every, you know, you have some kind of role. It might be the manager where you're managing the schedule of other people. A lot of us stress out because we're trying to manage our own schedules. And now you're looking at this for an entire team. So, I mean, think about trying to look at a schedule overall and, and, and filling in all the meetings, all the safety meetings, all the, the PMs that need to be done, all the extra, we need to write an SOP or, you know, all of a sudden we have a town hall that we need to be part of, or, you know, IT just upgraded the system. We need a training for this, or we're getting a, a, a vendor on site that's going to show us these new bar screens. There's so much to juggle and manage. And now whether you're a planner scheduler or not, we are our own planner schedulers, right? That's, that's really our role in our day to day. And so I love this picture because we're constantly looking at different things that we're focused on. Um, one thing to remember, whether you're using um, Outlook, right, if you manage your calendar on Outlook, um, and if this was more discussion-based, I'd ask and have everybody kind of spit out at me with some of the stuff that they're doing. Um, some of us might use task lists and Outlook. Um, the most important thing is to make sure that you're scheduling enough time for those different activities, that you're, when you're planning, you're looking ahead, you're looking at what's coming up. I have, I have a counterpart um, that we work simultaneously on a lot of our projects. And so we're constantly communicating and checking in and looking at our calendar, but making sure as you look and you plan, which is a very important seven habit, Covey seven habits is planning. Um, you look at your static activities, kind of your day-to-day -day that have to occur. Um, you build in time for your projects and tasks, uh, but we tend to forget, right? Our work life, our work life balance and self-care. And there's gonna be more on this. So don't think it's all here, but um, we have to take care of ourselves that we really do come first. And then flexibility, when you're working in a schedule, I mean, think about the planner schedule. You have to plan for like all of a sudden there's an emergency on the plant or there's an overflow, the, all the crews are gone, other work has to, you know, you have to be able to react, right? And allow buffer time. One of the biggest tricks that I learned is if I had to travel somewhere, which I think for a lot of us, maybe not as much, you have to not just put the time of the meeting, but also your travel time because people will swoop up and try to take it and that just becomes too stressful. So just uh, keep that in mind that scheduling on a calendar is still one of the primary time management uh, foundational tips, okay? I wanted to come here sharing something new that hopefully nobody has heard, but I, I could be wrong because I know that we have an amazing group of participants on this, on this uh, training today. Um, but I was trying to think a little bit about shift work and just looking at tasks uh, and the activity list in general. And I read a lot about nurses, right? And you think nurses, essential staff, just like we are going into work, um, kind of how do they operate? They, they work in various shifts, right? Um, a lot of highly administrative function, a lot of different levels of stress. 
And so I learned about this. Uh, I'm so excited. Learn about cogn cognitive stacking, right? Okay, you guys, cognitive stacking is just a very, very fancy word for creating a list in your head, okay? So now you can go back and tell your boss or your peer, like, I'm a really good cognitive stacker. I know, like, listen, I'm really good at this. Or I might not be good at this. Listen, if it's in my brain, it's probably swirled around with kids doing math and taking the dog out and answering this meeting and this call and, and doing a, a Bay work presentation. There's a mess in there. Um, so again, back to your tried and true. One of the key, key, key time management pieces is writing a list. Believe it or not, writing a list has so many benefits, a task list. One, if it's written, whether it's online, again, I, you have to decide works best for you. Or if it's on paper, um, you have it visually in front of you. And there's this thing in our brain that we feel good when we cross it off. There's that one component or check it off or align it. There's a bunch of other time management tips such as delegating and streamlining and finding efficiency. And part of that is writing a list and identifying those things. Um, but really cognitive stacking is a workflow management process. It helps you set priorities and it helps you manage your time. So while we're not nurses, although I could argue that, I could really argue that with some of our day-to-day, -day, um, we, we have to respond that way. In our roles, whether you're an engineer, whether you work in the lab, whether you work in finance, no matter what it is that you do, especially right now, we feel like we're more overwhelmed than we ever have. And to be honest, it's really the external that's impacting us emotionally. Um, more than ever, we need to find a rhythm or something that works to help us get through our day to day because we're balancing so much more than we ever have. And so it really starts with managing time by creating a task list. This cognitive stacking, it's like you're invisible. It's a dynamic process. What else did I put on my slide? Big thing is routine. It's um, looking at past habits, right? So if you're really trying to get in the rhythm and try something out. You want to look over a week and see where you're putting your time. It's almost like you're inventorying your time. Um, creating a routine, finding, you know, this is when I work best. And you're gonna hear more about um, the circadian rhythm in just a minute, lots more fun stuff. Um, it's when you find those processes and the routine and, and most effective and most productive, you wanna mimic those things. Again, I go back to my example with my, with my counterpart. I'm fortunate enough to have someone that I, could, I work really, really closely together. I know not all of us have that, but maybe your manager, your team can help. Um, Thursday afternoon seems to be some of our most productive times. So we always block two, three hours for us to work on specific things, that, uh, projects that we're working on. So again, it's finding what works for you. And then I put tangible list on there because even though we're good cognitive stackers and a lot's in here, there's 5 million other things. And again, if you haven't done this in a while and myself guilty for it, um, when you write things down and you have something tangible, again, it gives you kind of your brain operates like, okay, I'm being successful, I can check that off. All right, handout alerts. Okay, so I gave you a bunch of stuff. This is probably the only one, this handout here has probably the most data. So if you wouldn't, if you don't take the PowerPoint or you don't think anything's exciting of it, except for this one handout, I think this is really, really good. From someone who's done a lot of research and has read a lot of books about time management organization, your top three, your top three experts, subject matter experts in the field will always be David Allen, Stephen Covey, and then Allen uh, Lake, I always call him Lakin. Um, and they talk a lot about time management and prioritizing. So hopefully out of those three names, everybody's heard of Covey, okay? So I gave you, I found this handout. I did not create it. I'm one to say if something's amazing, I'm just gonna forward on something amazing and give them credit. This is a great takeaway for you to bring back to your team or just to reference. If anything, this will probably hopefully be your favorite handout. Um, Covey's prioritization, okay? So a lot of us might be familiar with this. You've seen this probably in a bunch of different uh, books or different trainings. Um, again, there's why reinvent something that works, right? So if you just have fallen out of that habit, take the time to really understand and, and practice good prioritization, okay? And so Covey came up with this grid, right? This concept, I'm using my hands if you can see me. And it goes from urgent and important. So you wanna focus your time. Now, here's the trick. You can identify all those things. And then I always get the question, well, okay, now I know, but where do I spend most of my time? 
in a good, let me take that back, a strong or an effective time manager will be able to spend majority of their time in quadrants one and two in your important stuff, right? So if it's urgent, so if you look at your handout or if you're able to download it or if you look at it later, um, they actually give a little bit better of a description. I like this image. It's because I like the do it now, decide when to do it, the delegate and dump it. That's another, that's another fun training. But on the handout, they give a little bit more detail. The urgent means you have to do it between today and tomorrow. Those are your urgent things. And then everything kind of moves from there. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. If you're familiar with it, great, or spend more time learning about it. Um, but really the idea is when you look at your tasks and your activities, you really kind of find them in these different quadrants. You would be surprised that a lot of our stuff, we don't think about it, can fall in quadrant three. Um, it might seem that it needs to be done, but it's really not important. And so when I get to the manager's tips, it, it might, I'll bring that back up. Um, all right, keep going on with prioritization hierarchies. So this is also on your handout, um, the ABC method. This is probably, again, a tried and true. This should not be new to anybody, but if you haven't tried it, I encourage you. And this is um, probably about 10 years ago when I was uh, managing a large training program for for-profit education. Um, I lived off of a clipboard with lined paper and I wrote my list, but in the, um, I don't know if you guys could see it, you'll see my written notes. You know how in the, you probably can't look at this. I can't show you. I'm trying to show you the line piece of paper and how you have kind of your margin. Oh my gosh, you can't see it. This silly background. I don't know. I know. When you look at a line piece of paper, you have, you typically have a margin. Or if you don't, you can, you know, take a ruler and create your own margin. It's really there's where you put your ABCs. And uh, again, here's a great example without going into detail. The must do's, the should do's, the nice to do's. Okay. And so that's another great way, again, to be a stronger, more effective time manager is that you're using this method. Real quickly, because I want to move on, I did this little research on nurses, and I thought this was worth sharing. I thought this was kind of fun and just a different analogy for a different industry, but it might apply to some of you. If you don't like ABC or the four quadrants, the nurses use um, something called CURE. They have an acronym called CURE. Um, and it's how they prioritize, right? And again, for, depending on what they're doing, it might be life and death, but really what they're looking at tasks, this is critical, this is urgent, this is routine, and this is extra. And for me, I can relate to that probably more than an ABC. So I thought it was worth sharing with you. So extras would be non-essential. Routine is your ongoing tasks. Urgent, it has potential, here I say harm or escalation, that it might, maybe it's something, a deadline that might be impacting somebody else. Um, so again, um, this might be a different way that you wanna prioritize your list, okay? So there you have it. There are your three kind of primary, like it's gonna work every time, a schedule, whether it's a planner, um, a task list, an activity list. Here are just some screenshots of some different things. Um, some of us have um, like third-party softwares and programs that you can subscribe to or already built in, right? Like our Hawk system. As engineers or project managers, we have punch lists and ta task lists and core lists. I mean, some of you are probably pros at writing lists at this point and tracking where you are in the process, almost like Gantt charting is another form of time management because you're managing where you are in a project. You know, here's an example of a task list. Um, here, actually, this is a screenshot from many, many moons ago. Um, I would organize my calendar. What's great is utilize your technology to be smart for you. And I would color coordinate and categorize everything. So anything that was for my group was red. Anything that was for emergency related, because my emergency hat, I made um, orange. I created a coding system. So here's a task list. You can organize and find your tasks. This would be a good, if, if you don't know how to um, use all the advantages, the bells and whistles for Outlook, this would be a, a great tool to do. All right, so here's just some more screenshots. Moving right along, again, I like to give a bunch of stuff. I did not create this. Um, I'm really into infographics right now. I think um, you can really tell a lot just with an image. In your handouts, I wouldn't recommend printing some of these. Some of these are gonna be off size. The intent is if you find it helpful, if you think this is cool or if it relates to you or you know someone that this might help, send it to your team, use it. If you don't, hey, I saved paper. You don't have to toss it. You just don't need to save it. Um, but again, there's some really cool, just like high level reminders. And on the top of this one, um, 
maximizing your time is that definition again of is that conscious control. So remind yourself, time management is that conscious control of planning and behaviors. So there's that handout. Okay, tips for working from home. For those of you who were in my training yesterday, you learned that I was expressive and I already talked a mile a minute. Now I'm talking 200 miles a minute. Okay. Um, I might miss a few things, um, but you know, again, based on just again, COVID, I took some time to really look what's out there. Working from home is not anything new. I did that many, many years ago. COVID didn't create that. And I think some of you may have already been doing that before. Um, it's just a different time right now. And there are different external factors. A lot of us, if we were already working from home, may not have been doing that with children in the house or taking care of a loved one or family member. So there are still different factors. The other thing too, is this whole element of not knowing and how well your agency is communicating. Information's moving so fast and just, there's just a lot. There's a lot going on in the world today. Um, and then to kind of change and throw you off, you know, kind of in the beginning might be like, oh, this might be kind of cool. I've been always wanting to work from home. I, I knew I'd be more productive. And believe it or not, certain working styles are more productive in this workspace. I mean, I can do a bunch of different trainings on different topics, but staying on this one, time management, um, the hard part about being here and not being able to clock out is sometimes that calendar, that line, that time will blur. Um, and I can't speak again if, if you have different arrangements for, you know, watching your kids or what have you, your schedule might already look different at home. But just remember your commitment of time and, and your flexibility, but at the end of the day, set boundaries. Um, all too often when you have, when you're logged in all day long, it almost, for some of us, you know, the evenings here and we're having dinner, what have you, it's almost, you want to go check, go check what's going on at work. And uh, that's the hardest part is make sure that you have your clock in and clock out time and have some hard boundaries. Have those boundaries, maybe even with your manager, you know, you shouldn't always be accessible 24 seven, unless that's what your job requires you to do. Um, so make those agreements if they're not there and also have that assumption with, with your peers. Don't think because you're available in the middle of the night that they should be as well. Same thing with your deadlines and priorities. Um, here's something interesting and this applies to working at home. For those of you that like uh, music, music actually can make you more productive. So if you are in your own space and have the ability to break apart from you know, whatever um, ex external barriers or factors, um, one tip for working from home is changing your playlist depending on what you're working on. Um, so if you're working on certain projects, it might be a certain kind of music. If you need energy first thing in the morning, maybe it's a different kind of music. Um, avoid multitasking. Um, so I'm going to talk about that at the end. You actually decrease your productivity quite a bit when you're trying to, and I know this happens, people think, oh, I can like do my laundry now and do this and do that. Um, Multitasking has been proven that it's your brain can't do it. It's hard to function and switch between tasks. I missed one. Find a good spot at home. By now, for those of us that have been home, we've made some major, major adjustments, technology being one of them. I don't know about you, but I have a dual screen. I now have a ring light. I now have a 32 inch monitor. Um, I have, even for my kids, I got them a uh, little Wi Fi laptops. They plug into the TV. Um, ergonomics are very, very important. Right, um, but there's a lot that we can do at our own home to adjust. There's ways that we can set up our space, uh, make our chairs more comfortable. Um, they recommend not slouching on the couch to find a chair or sturdy table. I'm not gonna go deep into that. There's lots of resources for that. Um, prioritize your tasks. We talked about that. Don't procrastinate, that's gonna come up. Taking your breaks. So just as much as your log in and log out time, whatever it is, block it. So people don't steal your time if you need to take your breaks, if you're not taking them regularly, um, take your lunch. I've made my schedule personally, and I know this doesn't apply for everybody, I align them with my kids. So when they're on a break, they need to get off the computer. So the heck do I, I need to get out of this place. You know, you're stuck in this zone. So um, remember to walk away, just like they tell our kids too much of this, right? We don't have when we're not in the workplace now, we're missing some of those interruptions that, you know, in the past might have been a little bit annoying. Now we kind of miss them, right? That, that ability to have some social interaction. And then um, without going into detail, because this could be its own separate thing, work from home plans. Again, everybody's got a different circumstance. Um, 
whether um, you have to adjust to any ex external like kids. And I keep bringing that up because that is probably one of the biggest for a lot of us, why, why we are still at home too, um, or just loved ones or just your own safety. A lot of us are here and have decided or are required still to stay at home just because of the current climate that we're in, right? And the environment. So moving right along from there, Zoom fatigue. It's a real thing. Um, who would have thought? I come from a world where I was in an international company, online meetings and Zoom meetings were like a normal occurrence. Uh, then I stepped out of that world for about four years and now got thrown back into it. It takes some time to, to acclimate. For some of us, not no experience at all. For others, we might have. And some for others, this is nothing new. Um, I love this little meme here there, but there are some pros. What some of the great pros from this virtual environment is look at the training buffet as a perfect example. Um, some of us in the past may not have had the ability to join those because we couldn't travel um, or it just took too much time or we wanted one topic and didn't want to go the whole day there. So there is a lot of benefit for a lot of these things to be virtual now, but there's also a lot of cons and it's time. And we think, I think in the beginning, a lot of us just said, oh, I could do this, I could do this. And people adjusted and now meeting after meeting after meeting, um, my group use MS Teams. We always have the camera on. I'm, I mean, I'm always camera ready. Not everybody is, right? Um, and not everybody likes that. Not everybody's comfortable with that. And it's a different world and it's a different feeling. And so my only tip here, or one of my tips here, two things for you, consider balance. Just because there's a ton of free webinars and a ton of free training out there, is it something that you really, really need? Is it, is it valuable to your time? Are you overloading yourself with a lot of extra that you could be focused on other skill stuff, other professional development, or are you not doing enough? You know, kind of consider that balance. And then if you are a person that has control of the meeting, my biggest feedback to you is really, really consider the agenda. And this actually is a tried and true, no matter what kind of meeting. Um, can it be an email? Can it be, can I get, can I send a survey out, get feedback a different way? Does it have to be a meeting? Can I wait until there's other topics? Is it really, really important? Or can I just keep certain audience members in here? Do I need this whole team there? Or can I just work with certain project points? Really kind of be sensitive to the amount of Zoom meetings. Yeah, it's more convenient because I could do it from home and I could have my jeans on and be comfortable. But really, if I'm doing 12 meetings a day, how productive am I really? I'm burning out. I really am. And speaking of burnout, burnout is real, right? I think um, if we could, if we had time for show of hands, I would say everybody might be feeling that way. And again, it goes back to that unknown of what's going on. Um, but here's some, how do you know if you're burning out? Here are some of those signals, right? Um, and they can really, really do some damage on your health. But, you know, you might get more irritable. You might be snapping. Like, I feel like my emotions get heightened. And whether my family feels it, sometimes my boss, you know, like you just, uh, you can, you can feel that kind of grumbling of just feeling exhausted. And some, it's like it's sometimes for us, we may not have gotten more work, but it just seems more overwhelming because it's harder to get things accomplished because you can't get a hold of people or connect with people. But you lose motivation, right? You wake up some days and you're just like, I, if I have to log in one more time from the kitchen table while my kids are shouting, making their eggs, and my dog needs to go out, like, I, I can't, I'm going to crack, you know? So everybody's feeling that, right? Um, poor sleep. I think uh, in the very beginning, I, I heard almost all of my peers, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. It's just, and again, that's a lot of the external factor. Again, um, if you're not scheduling your time breaks, believe it or not, <laughs> for some of us, naps are critical reboots. Um, learn to say no. Um, there's a lot of resources out there and strategies. We, that's not what this training is, but learn to say no. Maybe, maybe you really do have a full plate and my lovely analogy of spinning plates, you just can't. Like I, I can only manage five spinning plates right now. That one, it's gone, like I can't. Self-care, you hear that analogy if you're on a plane, right? And the gas mask comes down. I love that analogy, as silly as it is, it's really, really real. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not gonna be productive. You're gonna impact other people's deadlines. There's going to be perception, um, and then it's just it just continues to go downhill from there. So really, really take care of yourself. Sleep. Um, this is where I get more in the touchy feely, right? This is you don't you don't schedule this, or do you? Right? Do you schedule sleep? That's the question, right? Are you ending your day? Are you turning off your computer? Are you stepping away? Are you getting away from electronics? Are you ensuring that you're trying to get in bed at a certain time that works for you? Everybody's different. 
I'm not going to tell you how many hours of sleep you need. Everybody's different. Your health. Um, interesting fact, this is about kids, but I think it might relate to some of us. But on average, our kids have gained 20 pounds since March 15th. And that's Hopkins research. That's a reality for our kids. And look at the environment that they're in. They're sitting more than they ever have. They're not interacting. Um, I don't know the statistics for us, um, but I can almost see virtually some of you guys shaking your, he your head. Some of us have done an amazing job finding time for health. And those that have done that, hopefully you're feeling a lot better. But if you haven't, I really, really encourage you to find that balance. And then developing new skills. Another great way to prevent burnout um, or fatigue is to focus on you and growth because that builds confidence. Um, it makes you stronger and more efficient in other things. And that professional development is critical. Leadership is critical during this time of unknown and uncertainty. And that helps um, really gain, um, again, comes back to that confidence piece. All right, another handout alert, um, another infograph. This one's kind of fun. This one you might want to post around the office, maybe send it to like a peer that you know needs it. Did you know that the most productive day of the week is a Tuesday? You know, and then uh, the other one talks about listening to music. Um, it says adults who regularly get between seven and a half to nine hours sleep can be 20% more productive. Um, and then it talks about, here's one other interesting one. This is when I talk about stopping the clock. And I'm very, very bad at this because I'm, you know, I need to continue to practice what I preach. Um, but it says working, once you work more than 40 hours, you actually decrease your productivity by 50%. So if you're going to invest more time to get things done, it's actually taking you twice the amount of time to get something done. Is that really valuable? Could you be focused on something on yourself or your family or whatever it might be? Um, you might want to really consider that if, if you're putting too much time there. So that's a fun handout for you to take. Some tips for shift workers. I'm watching my time, so I want to get to the good stuff. So I know that, um, well, I hope there already was good stuff. Um, I know we don't have as many on here, but this might be good feedback for your peers. Um, some of us, whether we've already been coming into the office, we are still being impacted with our families being at home or other changes. I know at my agency, we've been put in smaller groups, smaller pods. We're working different hours. Our lab has been broken up into different shifts. Um, we have groups of people that used to interact every day that haven't seen each other since March. That's a huge, huge impact, okay? So 80% of shift workers will usually experience some kind of personal or social or medical problem that relates to their work schedule. And we thought this was temporary. And the reality is it may not be. It's, it's gone on and it will continue to go on. So now is the time if we haven't already, that kind of reality adjusts. But shift stress is real, just like um, being stressed at home, irritability, fatigue, loss of energy and alertness. Now, if you are a mechanic or if you are anybody, anybody that's operational coming in and you're not alert, you know what risk that puts you at, the safety impact that that'll have. Our goal and always should be your, our goal is that you're getting home safe to your family every single day. And so if your health and if that stress, shift stress, is shift stress isn't under control, it's gonna impact you. So really, really find your ways. And so there's a bunch of different strategies same things, actually, believe it or not, whether you work from home or shift work, a lot of those things apply. Shift schedule, sleep schedule, make it work. Habits, the health, the, the more you focus on your, your health habits, the better you'll feel, um, whether it's meditating, journaling, um, drinking water, but sleep is critical, but your sleep is going to look different. You know, some of us went from a five-day work week to a three-day work week. And so now you've compacted all that time. Sure, you get an extra break. Sure, your lunch is a little bit longer, but it throws off everything at home. And just imagine the stress when you get there. I'm gonna, I wanna give you another fancy word for you to take back to look really, really cool in the office. So we had cognitive stacking. And this one you may have heard before, this is one of my favorites, the circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm, and I could do a whole class on that. It's basically, if you look at your clock, your 24 hour clock, it's when you're most alert and when your body is most regulated and you can adjust it based on the shift work that you do. Um, it has a lot to do when how the light hits your eye and the melatonin that's produced and your ability to be at your best or most energetic. Um, it's a fascinating topic. It's a lot of shift work. You have to really, really think about your circadian rhythm and that actually applies to anybody. Um, 
Tips for managers, um, if you're leading teams. Um, big, big thing, it's not really about time management for your team, it's the same. You know when we said time management was a process piece? So if you're leading a team, it's really lack of direction, not lack of time. And I'm not saying that you're a not effective manager and you're not giving deadlines. But if you have people feeling overwhelmed about time, think about what messaging is going out and what's not. Maybe there's some opportunities to have some one-on-one. -on -one. I've noticed that during this time of COVID, the most successful supervisors and managers, and when I talk to my peers, I can tell the difference between those that are flourishing and doing really well and finding things that work to where others are still feeling some anxiety. Um, and it comes really comes down to communication. So this is when Caroline gets a little bit softer, a little bit quieter. I bring down my tone a little bit because this is so, so important. And I'm not going to put this weight only on supervisors and managers. I'm going to put this on everybody. Right now is a time to be sensitive, to be empathetic, to be kind. And there's just so much going on anxiety. Everybody's feeling it different ways. And I think everybody at the end of the day wants to be productive. Everybody wants to be successful. Um, everybody's just trying to find their zone. And they need a lot more emotional and, me and mental support. I love this picture here. Now, I've used this picture for years. And it's I've always had this debate. Is it culture or not? The behavior, the come in, we're open, that whole open door policy. And what do you practice at work, right? Is it important? Should your door always be open to take every conversation? Then how are you productive as a manager? And I think what you need to do is you need to find your balance because your team, especially now more than ever, needs to have access to you and you should have access to them. And it's just really that emotional check-in. There's this disconnect. And again, I've seen it and hopefully you've been able to see that with your peers. The ones that are doing really well are, are having more open dialogue. If, if you feel like your team members are struggling, then instead of calling and asking about where a project is, take a moment, just be like, how are you feeling? Um, some of us are doing it and it's still just a lot going on, right? So there's no magic way, but open door, making sure that your team has access to you uh, um, or someone if they need it. Um, and I'm not just saying mental health, I'm just saying just in general, if they ask questions, use your tools if you haven't already used MS Teams or Skype, whatever it is, that ability to connect faster, do that. Or have office hours if that works well, okay? Um, coaching strategy. This slide looks like a lot. I know you guys could read and also you can download this, but this one's really interesting. Um, when an employee says they don't have enough time, we already talked about this, it's not that they don't have enough time, it's priority. So what they're really saying is this item isn't a priority to me. That's not good or bad. That's just, okay, I'm a manager. I'm trying to have my employee or identify employee to do something or an activity or get back to me. I need something from them, but they say they don't have time. A coaching strategy for a leader is to really go back and reverse engineer and ask these questions. It's not, your employee may physically, like actually on the calendar, not have enough time, but if you don't take the time and go through that with them and help understand, then it's just gonna be, you're gonna constantly feel like, well, they can't manage their time well. Well, no, they have 5,000 other priorities. I will be more than happy to do that for you, boss or whoever, peer, if you tell me what I can put to the side because I have so much going on. So here on the slide, this is a takeaway. This actually is a good, um, good self-assessment too. Some questions you can self-coach as well when you're talking about time. Um, what, why is it that I feel that I don't have enough time? And then go through and say, okay, what is, do I have too much on my plate? Where is, you know, where's my inventory of my schedule? Things like that. So I'm not going to read this whole slide there for you, but you can have it to uh, take away and review later. Um, and let's see here. Another handout. Okay. Another fun one for you. This one's a longer infograph. Um, this could be what a manager might want to give their remote workers. This might just be something you want to reference. You might want to send it to a peer, or it just may not be appropriate for you. You might find something in there. Um, like investing in technology, things like that, that might be helpful for you. So again, it's just take it, use it if you want to. If not, then bypass it. All right, two last, two last things that I can get in. I'm going to get this done in time. Uh, time wasters, because you can't talk about time management if you don't talk about the barriers. And there's two big ones. I mean, there's cell phones and stuff in the workplace, but okay, we're at home right now. We already have a bunch of those distractions. Um, two things, multitasking. This when I'm talking about time management, this becomes a huge debate and fight, right? A lot of us really do feel like we can multitask. The reality is, here's the fact, about only 2.5% of the population can actually 
process task, tasks simultaneously, like at the same time. And think about how amazing our brain is and all the stuff that's going on in there. I mean, our brain is making sure our heart, our blood is pumping, making sure we're able to breathe, making sure that we're able, you know, whether it's vision or seeing or whatever, getting your nervous system, our, our brain's already doing a lot of work. And so to do a bunch of other tasks, like here's the perfect picture of like um, Jeannie from Aladdin with his hands everywhere. Can we do all these different things? Uh, no, the reality is you won't be as productive. The outcome won't be as strong if you're multitasking. Um, it's also called task switching because what happens is when you switch from task to task, you are more likely to make 50% more errors because of you're doing that. So again, if you're scheduling, you're doing a task list, schedule the time to focus on it and complete it. Now, if you know you're not gonna complete it in that day, but you have a good hard stop and you're not gonna go back to it, then yeah, you can certainly switch, right? And so there's some kind of rules there. If it's less than 15 minutes and you know you can get a hard stop, do it. If it's something you run in the background, I do a lot of stuff with Camtasia where I need to like render a film, but I could do three other things while I'm waiting, do things like that. If you're out on the plant and you're doing PMs um, or something like that, or you're in the lab and there's kind of like multiple things, but you can do a couple steps without, you know, causing any errors, then consider it. But really multitasking even from home and doing a bunch of different things. Like when I try to teach my kid math, and try to prepare for a meeting, it doesn't work. Um, you really got to make and dedicate time for that or you're just, you're not going to produce the same result. And the last concept, procrastination. Um, you know, Robert, I think next year I should do a whole class on this because it's one of my favorite subjects of all. Procrastination, here's our flow chart, right? Do something right now. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, it's basically our form, it's our like self-regulation of failure for whatever reason, because it's a lot of procrastination is mental. Here's some tips for you in my last two minutes. I got this. Um, procrastination does have some positive um, to it. A lot of us feel like we're most invigorated when we do that. That goes back to our circadian rhythm. That goes back to like, I'm going to wait till the last minute or this end of the day. I like to do my research at night because that's when I'm most, most effective and my brain's alert and I'm in my creative zone. So procrastination has a lot to do with the timing of what needs to be done. Um, a lot of times we procrastinate because we also don't have the skill set. We may not realize, you know what, I am putting that task off because I don't feel confident I know how to do it right and I'm not comfortable asking. Or we procrastinate because we're overwhelmed. We have too much going on. Um, so here's my little, my, my little overcoming procrastination things you can put in place. One, reflect on your own triggers. Why are you procrastinating? Take that kind of self-assessment. Why do I keep putting, I hate reports. I hate pulling up data. I hate working in Excel. Well, guess what? If, you, if that is a primary component of your job, you want to do some kind of skill boosting, skill development, work in an area that makes you more uh, stronger. If not, learn to delegate, learn to project manage, um, work with others that might be able to help you with that project, right? Is that a possibility? Circadian rhythm, your energy level. Listen, I am, I am really, really good at seven o'clock. From six to seven, that's my best time. That's when I get my work done. Inventory your skills. Um, assess your distractions. Maybe it's actual devices. Maybe it's electronics. Um, have a list of productive things to do. So I know I'm in my last minute. I'm going to end this. Um, sometimes we procrastinate because the fear of it being too big of a project or we want to focus on something more creative. Have a little task list, work on those, and then dedicate your time. Take a larger project, make it smaller. Um, try something physical or creative. They actually say if you remove yourself and go exercise or go mow the lawn or go do something physical, then you come back and you're kind of back in that, that frame of mind. Solicit input. Maybe someone else might can inventory your skills or just give you some motivation. Maybe talk to your boss, maybe renegotiate deadlines and then learn to say no. All right, that's procrastination. Okay, it's three o'clock. I hope that you learned something cool. I hope that you learned that you know scheduling and planning and uh, making task lists is still your, your primary way of doing that. I hope some of those tips are helpful. Please, please be kind. There's a lot of change. Um, focus on you and your health during right now. Connect with people. And then I hope that um, even if you come back to learn more about procrastination, that you know that you can't multitask and that if you're procrastinating, understand why. So that's it. I got it done fast. Yeah. Thank you I don't so know if that much, means Caroline. Time questions, though. <laughs> yeah.
Can everybody hear me okay? I'm I'm dialing in, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but I just want to let you know there's a survey uh, in the chat field for those of that have to leave. Oh, good. You can hear me. Thank you. And um, it's also going to be emailed to you. Uh, if you have any questions, I mean, talk about um, time management. <laughs> if you have to run, uh, that's okay. Um, but if anybody has any questions uh, or comments. I can um, stick around for a few I, minutes too as well. Oh, great, great. I'm glad. So um, I did say uh, see one from uh, Anthony Smith who says, I've been meaning to go to a procrastination class, but I keep putting it off. Oh. <laughs> I have a great book. I don't, oh God, the, um, I should know the author too, because she's a life coach. The book is called Coach Yourself to Success. Um, but it talks about time management, prioritizing. It talks about like money management, home management. Um, Anthony, if you shoot me an email, I can send you that, that book. Um, I love that book. And that's really where I started with learning about procrastination. And that um, procrastination is pretty normal, but a lot of us realize it's because our own skill set. But I love that. Keep Caroline, can I hold you to also, what you said? You hold me to what I said? Yeah, you said I I can do a class next year. Yes. Procrastination. If people don't put it off, then yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to do a class on that. I love that subject. It's really it's actually really, really interesting. We think, you know, we it, it, you could actually learn a lot from the, the topic. So yes, you can hold me to it. Anything right. else? Anything pressing in the chat? Anthony uh, Smith actually said I think the open door should actually be open mind. Uh, be willing to listen to the issues that your staff bring up, but it doesn't mean you have to be available every moment of the day. You yes. still have work to do too. Absolutely. There is a balance because manager, I mean, how do you get your things done if you're constant? Um, I had it one last, again, uh, people might be logging off, but one, one manager of mine that I really, really appreciated is that regardless of open door, whenever I came with a problem, I had to come with two solutions. One, it made me think and made me learn but it also made our conversation so much. It was more of a, a coaching conversation and that time was much well spent. So there are a lot of great tips out. You're right, open mind. I think if you know your people and if you have a genuine a genuine relationship with your people, um, you can be so much more effective as a leader. Mm, that's great. And um, uh, Steve uh, Nemec, thank you so much. The book is by Talene. Yes. He put in the you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah, exactly. I would have, I should put a screenshot you. on it. Yeah, coach yourself to success. I, I mean, if, if I was in my office, actually, my my work office, it's right there. I have, it's like, you could tell it's been used. I got all my tabs in there. Um, I did a bunch of training off of that one. It's been a great book. Great book. Great. Thanks for putting well, that I in. Yeah, thank you so much, Steve. That's really great. Um, and uh, I, I put it in the chat field as well, but just as a reminder, all of the um, presentations, the video, and the handouts are going to be on our baywork.org website uh, in our resources um, uh, page So for past events. So we'll, we'll be getting to that and hopefully be, you know, get it up there soon. Perfect. So well, any you, more everybody. questions or comments? Oh, thank you so much, Caroline. It was just really great. I I was uh, I'm, I've been taking lots and lots of notes, <laughs> so um, and I really really appreciate it. Got some I learned a lot of really good gems of information. So okay. thank you. We are all now cognitive stackers. <laughs> all right. I, I hope everybody does well. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I really enjoyed my time. Thank you, Baywork. <laughs>